I don't think I'm alone, right? I, I think everyone feels like their world flipped upside down in March. Um, so, I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to speak from a personal perspective, right? Because we're all humans going through this. And, um, you know, I, I think from a personal perspective, you know, my my own schedule was, was flipped upside down because I have children who are in school, right? So all of a sudden, overnight, I was responsible for homeschooling. And, oh, by the way, we're also <laughs> going through this, like, major thing at work where, you know, we invest heavily in in-person events. And all of a sudden it's, you know, I, I think it started with South by Southwest. It was yes. like, we're not gonna do South by Southwest because of this, this COVID-19 thing. Like we think it might be something we, we wanna get out of. And, and all of a sudden it, it was just like a snowball within like three, five business days. It was now, we gotta shut down everything. We have to change our messaging. I mean, it was while I'm homeschooling. <laughs> Right. So now you're the VP of marketing. Oh, and you're a teacher. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my, my home life, um, you know, running. Cause obviously we're all concerned and right. And, and for anyone who's parent, who is a parent knows, um, you know, kids all of a sudden were very, um, scared, right? School yes. was canceled. Like that's never happened like this before. And what does that mean? And so you're trying to keep your children calm you're trying to keep your employees calm. <laughs> you're trying to uh, keep yourself you know, calm. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep yourself calm. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, you know, having spent time at SAP, we chatted about that. We have that connection, yeah. Yeah, we have that connection. I, I know that SAP was always a bit of a supporter of remote work. Yeah. So, and I was a beneficiary of that support during my time there. So I'm curious to know, you know, with a mass move to remote work, like everyone, what was the impact? Was, did your customers experience the impact or was the transition fairly smooth? Yeah. Yeah. Dina, you bring up a good point because I do feel like, so, so you're right. We we already supported a remote workforce really well, and and we that put us in a place of strength because it wasn't as disruptive to our business as I think other companies who um, did not support a remote workforce. So um, I, I view that as a complete strength because it wasn't a huge transition for us. Um, you know, we still continue to work as a team in the same way that we had before. We were, re we were used to trying to rely on remote technologies to, to collaborate. So, you know, it, it really allowed us to act quicker because we didn't have to um, take on a, a learning curve of the work remotely. And that's so important. People miss that. Um, there's a significant advantage in pivoting quickly but with accuracy, right? Yeah. Um, and, and there's an art and a science to being able to do that. And I was, I, I was, I was always in the back of my mind thinking, I know SAP did great with that. Um, Cause I'm still senior <laughs> cheerleader, <laughs> but there are like, for example, if you look at the business model of Televerde, right? Where we have a mix of, of workers, right, that are at different types of locations and needing to be able to pivot, still be able to support their work. And yet, you know, it's exciting to be able to see that Televerde did it without missing a beat, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, without dropping a single ball for any of our clients. And so I know there are a lot of companies out there that it was a huge adjustment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the, they scrambled just to get the equipment. There were folks who didn't have laptops for goodness yeah. sake, right? Yeah. To be able to make that move. And so you mentioned something else that's pretty exciting or at least hot topic, I would say. And that is a lot of events, physical face-to-face -face mm -hmm. events were impacted. I know I was impacted by events that you were like, my pipeline, my revenue, 
yeah. my leads, what am I going to do? And so there became this big pivot to maybe digital events or, you know, other channels to be able to fill those gaps. So how did COVID impact your marketing plan? Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, it certainly impacted it with the events, with the, you know, eliminating events. But I must say, um, you know, most of my career has been spent um, marketing to the small to mid-sized business segment. And we typically do that through digital. We, we lead with mm-hmm. digital. So it, um, once again, just like being set up as a remote worker, um, I felt like that uh, gave us an advantage, right? Because we already had programs in place and already had plans in place to lead with digital. Um, The thing that I think was the biggest shift is the messaging, right? So those plans and programs that we had already had in place um, were no longer relevant given the current climate. So even though we were already leading with digital, we still had to go through and um, we paused all our programs, paused nurturing, paused paid media, um, and just went through and, and actually went through copy, went through creative and said, what are the right words to use right now? What are the, what are the images to use, right? Because it comes to imagery as well. Um, and so just making sure that, um, that we were being appropriate. And yes. some of them we took off, some of them like we completely took them out. We just said, you know what, this is not the time. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's table this for later. Um, and then we actually added in some new um, marketing campaigns just because of our, you know, we have a pretty broad, um, as you know, we have a pretty broad <laughs> uh, product suite. And so now, you know, we're like digital supply chain, like supply chain is huge right yes. now. We need to be there for people who need help with their supply chain. So all of a sudden we were starting to introduce some new um, programs that maybe weren't part of the original uh, Q2 plan. You know, you, you touched on something that um, I want to elaborate on a little bit more, if you don't mind. And that is taking that moment to go through your messaging and ensure appropriateness, right? Um, and you also spoke on the digital first approach. And if you think about it with folks working more remotely at home, they're probably more engaged more than ever, right? Yeah. Digitally. Yeah. So share with me a little bit about your thinking of, even in looking at digital, did you have to look at digital channels you weren't typically using? Did you have to think about um, the best way to engage with the users in these new channels? Did it cause you to have to look at the plan and go, there's some gaps? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, and and it, it felt like, you know, this is the time for to build trust. Yes. This is the time that we can show we care not only about our customers, but our prospects, right? Um, so, you know, looking at everything through that lens and making sure that first touch, mm-hmm. that first digital touch is really just offering value just offer value, Um, give them something, either knowledge, free free product, whatever it is, Um, you're just offering value. So I think that was a big, big pivot for us. Um, Also, you you asked about um, different types of digital channels and, you know, this is not really different, but we're just looking at it in a different way and we're certainly not alone is, I don't even like to use the W word webinar because I feel like it has a, such a, a negative, like, oh, webinar. <laughs> oh, how profound and innovative. So we don't, um, in fact, I was reading an article and I wish I could remember what it was, but it, it said um, the first rule of running a virtual event is don't call it a webinar. So um, we're going to call it virtual events for the purpose of this. I'm with you. Um, so the, the, you know, think rethinking the virtual event. I think that's the, that's the, summary statement there we are rethinking virtual events yeah. and um you know getting creative around um like one of the examples in in the spirit of just adding value um you know sending our customers and our prospects a box full of um ingredients to make a mixed drink and then inviting them to a virtual event where we have a bartender explaining how to make that mixed drink but i didn't get a box <laughs> 
<laughs> I know, but I mean, like stuff like that, you know, we're just saying, let's stay connected. Here's a little something to help get you through the quarantine. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And you know what? That is huge. And I think, you know, part of what I've always thought was very important in marketing was to connect on that human, humane level. Yeah. We're humans, yeah. we're people, you know, it's not personas <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, we are, yeah. we're people and so what a perfectly right response yeah. right yeah. to be able to say wait a minute at the end of the day we're in this together and we all need to win and survive bring a smile to someone um, and I think that that was just amazingly clever um, to take that approach. And I bet I'd love to understand. And I bet you anyone who's watching this B2B bonfire would love it too. What kind of response did you get? What kind of feedback did you get? Well, truth be told, the event is next week. <laughs> <laughs> we can only work so fast, Deanna. Um, <laughs> no, it, it, you know, we're, I'll let you know, but I mean, I, the initial response has been very positive. And of course, everyone wants to run it now. Um, I, another thing I do want to call out because I think it's, um, it's an important thing to do is we're looking at how we can integrate our customers into these types of things. Mm. So another, another virtual event series we're looking at is, um, is a, a wine tasting event, right? And we have customers who are wine distributors and, and, and wineries. And so we're thinking, how do we support them That's right. in our marketing efforts? Um, another thing we did is with Mod Pizza, they're a great customer of ours. And um, obviously uh, food services is really struggling right now. And so we, we have a large sales organization. Basically it was close a quarter. We just said, Hey, you know, um, everyone go treat yourself to some mod pizza. Oh. And, you know, I mean, and these are the things that we would have done anyways, right? It's not uncommon for a sales leader to buy, you know, meals for their, yeah. their sales organizations and close a quarter. And, but it's like, why not use it as an opportunity to support our customers? And, and we, we made it really fun. We took pictures of ourselves and our families eating pizza and, um, and then sent it to Maude and just said, Hey, you know, we want to, we want to do what, we're, what we can, right. To help out. So I think it's not only doing these creative virtual activities, um, but also looking at how do we bring our customers into that as well? And how do we financially support our customers where we can? I think you've touched on something that I've been evangelizing a bit, which <laughs> is especially, I mean, you should do it all the time. We always talk about being customer centric and customer focused, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, buzzword of the, of the moment, but yeah. I think that really putting your customer at the heart um, is critical and particularly in, you know, your most challenging times, taking care of your customers is just the most important thing to do. Um, and so that's my perspective. It sounds like you guys are acting it out, right? And, and again, I, SAP, I'm, I still got my pom-poms, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's absolutely the right thing to do. And so I can imagine the impact on your customers. And there's a humanity in the marketing, right? That sometimes is missing. Would you yeah. agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, especially with um, B2B marketing, right? I, I think people forget that B2B marketing is still human to human marketing. And there's still a human consuming that information. And I, I feel like this, I feel like this crisis has mm. really put that first and foremost. Like you just can't keep doing what you were doing before the crisis after. So you have to acknowledge that. You're 100% you're correct. And in thinking about the crisis and the rise of humanity, which the fact that it had to rise is another thing, but <laughs> <laughs> the rise in humanity, Tell me your perspective of, you know, from a B2B approach. I've touched on humanity. I'm serving my customers, but I still got numbers to make. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, and, and I, again, that is not a, but statement. It's, it's not separate. They yeah. are connected. And yeah. I think yeah. that's important to call out. So as you're, you're thinking about yourself, your team, and you're thinking of your customers and you've reviewed messages and you've, you're pivoted. Yeah. What would you tell other marketers, right? That maybe don't have the budgets yeah. Right, yeah. Um, available to them. What do you recommend or what guidance would you give to another marketer to consider? Yeah, and, and you are you referring to specifically on how to keep driving pipeline? How yeah, to keep driving. Yeah, well, the, I don't know if I have the silver bullet, but I can just tell you how how we've been thinking about it, and this is something we, we're talking about on a regular basis. Um, so I think it's first is do do your homework and be aware of which industries are being impacted the most, right? Um, you know, we, we have we're fortunate enough to have. Um, an intelligence uh, group, an organization that does that does that research for us. Um, but I mean, I don't think it takes a lot of rocket science for somebody to go and do a few Google searches and find out which Probably industries great. are. Um, I mean, watch the news and you'll know. So I think it's first and foremost, just really understanding who's being impacted and who's not. Maybe focusing on those accounts that are not necessarily as, I think everyone is, is being negatively impacted in some way, shape or form. Um, but look at look at those who are not as impacted mm -hmm. and then really map any sort of values that you or i'm sorry any sort of offerings that you have to how you can support them if you're in a position to give your product away even for a limited time i mean that's a great way to to serve that up and say hey you know we we do have something that could help you and here it is for free um just knowing that you know if if they do engage and they do take advantage of your 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 offer um, you know, they're, they're then in your pipeline, right? And so then when, as we come out of this, because we will come out of this, yes, we will. Um, they will be, uh, they, they will hopefully, uh, have already gained a lot of value from, from your product and your solution. And, um, so it's, you know, you're, you're still building those connections and you're still, still building those revenue opportunities. You spoke on three things that I just kind of want to call out a little bit more, if you will, right? And that is do your homework. It's so important. Um, yes, there are, most organizations may not have an intelligence component, but you're spot on. It, it's not rocket science, right? So do your homework. And then you mentioned give back, if I'm summarizing what you shared, right? So do your homework, give back. Why? Well, I view it as your customers have invested in you. And so yeah. as much as it's possible, it's time to, it, you know, here's an opportunity to reciprocate in some kind of way. And so then point three would be um, on the other side of the tunnel, we would come out with them having more value that yeah. they yeah. may, may be ready to continue to invest or increase their investment because now they're in a position to do so. Did I catch that right? Absolutely, that was beautifully summarized, yes. <laughs> I, I tried, so um, I think that there's so much, right, from a marketing perspective, from a business perspective, and there's been a lot of focus on COVID and it certainly has impacted everyone's lives. I'm a mom, um, you know, just the things that have happened. If we were going to give some parting encouragement, because I think this is such a wonderful opportunity for us as marketers to come from, from behind our campaigns and strategies, and, right? And be people and just give encouragement. What would you say? Specifically to marketers? Mark <laughs> <laughs> to marketers, to salespeople, right? Um, because, yeah. because, I mean, they looked, we're their partners, yeah. right? So I, I feel that pain myself. What would you say to people in marketing? What would you say to people in sales? And then what message would you want to share with humanity? Yeah, yeah. Well, that one's really big. Um, so to start, to start with, um, from a business perspective, um, 
From a business perspective, I would say, you know, before all this happened, we used to always talk about how do we build trust, right? How do we be, how do we build, you know, raving fans? How do we, how do we create that connection um, with our customers um, that we, that, that is a lasting value, right? right. Um, and now is our opportunity. Um, now is the opportunity for us to build trust, to show that we showed up in the right way with the right words um, during some of our scariest times. Yeah. yeah. And when we come out the other side, our customers will remember that. And to me, this is a much more valuable thing to, um, to experience, right? Than any sort of um, marketing initiative, right? You can't create a marketing initiative to build trust, no. but you can build it by just doing the right things during these dark times. Oh my gosh. That needs to be hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be hashtag do the right thing in dark times. <laughs> you know, I would say Deanna from a, from a humanity perspective, cause I've actually been thinking a lot about this. Um, you know, I, I do think, and I, I don't think I'm alone here. We were all operating at a pace of life that was exhausting yeah. at least. <laughs> um, and especially as a working parent, right? Um, kids were overscheduled, right? Um, mm. Not cooking meals at home. Yes, not, singing the same song. Absolutely. Not finding the quiet times to enjoy each other's company. Um you know, I, I have found just personally that I, that we have just really gotten more focused on um, enjoying life, like cooking together and going on walks together. And, and I, and I'm finding I'm, a lot of my colleagues are kind of experiencing some of the same things. Now, none of us want to be quarantined. Let's be clear on that. Right. <laughs> but I think if I, my hope is that when we come out of this, maybe we'll come out of a little bit more appreciation for quiet time and um, creating some space um, for things. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, it's, I, I have to think that there's something we're gonna, the positive that we're gonna bring out of this um, time. I think it's, you're spot on with the creation of the quiet time and you know, a prioritization of what really matters, yeah. right? Um, we were so focused on digital transformations yeah. and engagements. And, you know, I think just coming back to things that are valuable conversation, which was mm -hmm. an art that I think was getting kind of lost. So hopefully this B2B bonfire is stimulating more conversation. Mm -hmm. um, to your point, prioritizing family, recognizing that life is a gift. Mm -hmm. One that should be valued and treasured. And I think it reminded some folks of the fragility. So well said.